It's unstable to be with Sarah and Maggie. Hey, bestie. Hey, bestie. It is summer among us, upon us. And so my children are all home in case any any sounds are making it into the background of the podcast. How are you guys making it this summer? We're doing, you know, we've been very busy, so, Mm -hmm. um, so far so good. And it hasn't been, I mean, it's been hot, but like, we're not in August yet. I feel like it's coming for us next week. I looked at the future forecast and it's like all 100 degrees. Yeah. Once it, once it starts to go a hundred, it's like a domino effect, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Weather's been staying busy. Yeah. Staying busy. Yeah. Same here. Same here. We had camps. We got uh, vacation coming up, vacation travel. Going to go see my brother and sister-in-law in in Denver in July, Mm -hmm. over the 4th of July. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll be super fun. And what's wild. Is it hot in Denver in the summer? I think it gets hot. I think it might cool off at night, though. But I feel like it gets in the 90s. But once you you get into the mountains, though, that's where that's where the gold is. Literally and figuratively. Literally <laughs> going mining for gold. Yeah. I feel like growing up it didn't get as hot. I mean, You're I guess in Rochester. Warming, there we go. Yeah. But is but my friend was saying that in Rochester it's been like in the nineties already. Well. So I don't know if it's just like unseasonably warm. Like a week of unseasonable warmth or if it's gonna be like that. Because our plan is to escape the heat in August and go up mm-hmm. to Rochester. But if I'm escaping 110 for 98, okay. I'm <laughs> look. All I can say is global warming. You know, that's all that's I can all say. I can that's say. It. That's I all I can say. I, just, I have nothing I else. Have to nothing add. else to add. I don't know. But I will say when it's, I will take the heat over the cold, because I think about that a lot when it's coming up and it's going to be 100 degrees and it's going to be miserable outside you're gonna sweat but I'm like I still think I would take that over three degrees outside yeah it's easier I don't know though I don't know it kind of takes the same amount of prep to go out. I was gonna say like it's easier because you don't have to put on like hats and mittens and gloves mm-hmm. but you have to put on sunscreen and you can't you have to run on shoes because your feet will burn yeah but those you know? shoes are like usually on my going on the feet anyways and sunscreen isn't like a snow suit i was watching oh, house yeah. hunters last night as i usually do before bed because it's very relaxing i love to see and i'm very voyeuristic in that i'm like i'm gonna see these houses love it and they were buying a home in south dakota and i'm like why because it was winter And so they were Mm -hmm. looking at this house and they did an aerial shot and it's like a new construction area. So there's not a lot of trees. There's probably a pasture, but you don't know because it's just all snow. And they went into the house and like the basement, the snow was like piled up on the window. I'm like, why would you do this to yourself? And they're like, it's normal. It's fine. This is, this is normal. And I'm like, no, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. It, I think about that a lot about like old people in Rochester where I grew up or even like just anywhere up north and how like they just have like you see people that are in their 90s shoveling their sidewalks and stuff. And I'm like, you have to be built. You do. Honestly, you got to be built tougher. You do. You do. To to be a North or South Dakotian yeah. or any type of northerner. Because I think about you guys have the um, – and I say you guys because you used to live up north. It was like – what is it called? Um, gloom. Like and during the winter, you, it's so cloudy all the time. And it's like Seasonal you know, affective disorder. Yeah. And people – it's hard because yeah. there's not a lot yeah. of sunshine. But there's no sun. There's no sunshine. And the sun sets at like 4. I know. But then in the summer, the sun doesn't set till like 10 p.m. That's true. Because you're basically – it's basically Alaska. Basically, you can see Russia from your house. You know, eventually, like if you look hard enough, you could see anything from <laughs> anywhere. You just have to try. Mm-hmm. If you just try. 
if you if you just try you could you could probably do what my next fact says okay i was waiting to see when this fact was because i'm like okay maggie let's get to it (laughs) okay well let's get to it sarah you ready for your fact i'm ready for my fact Thanks to summer heat and thermal expansion, the Eiffel Tower can be 15 centimeters taller in the summer months. That is fascinating. That's pretty 15 cool. 15 centimeters. 15 centimeters. That's Which I don't know how that converts to inches, but. Do you think it just grows out the top? I think the whole thing expands and then like all the metal expands because you know- of the thermal expansion and because of that it- all grows it's the eiffel totally. towers summer 15 you know we all go <laughs> we all go through it and there's no shame in that i say embrace it embrace that eiffel brace your yeah. 15 and if you lose it you lose it great no big deal but if you don't you look great too yeah it's kind of like you know like uh your pants become capris if you're the eiffel tower yeah in the summer which is perfect like anyways because you need the you need the extra wind on your legs you need a little extra flow how many inches is 50 do you know off the top of your how head how many inches is 15 centimeters yeah no clue i live in america <laughs> i mean why would i do that because i know that it's less than like in my head i can't stop thinking inches you know right. i'm like 15 well, think about centimeters but i'm converting i'm just converting like in a one-to-one way yeah. like centimeters to inches so i'm like that's over a foot and then i'm like i don't think it is though no. i think it's like Three inches? Probably like this much. How much is this much? Oh, did I freeze? Oh, wait, no, there it is. Oh. It's probably it's probably like it's probably like this much. Aren't centimeters like the width of your pinky? I don't know. I mean, don't you dilate in centimeters? Oh yeah. Okay, so ten centimeters like the width of a baby head. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then so So it's a one and a half baby head. One and a half baby head. It's like this. It's a lot. But you know what? There's no That's shame. Cool. We're not saying that Eiffel Tower in the sense of like a lot. Wow. You should be ashamed. We're saying that as a fact. It's just it's just a lot. That's a lot to grow. It's a great. It's a great. And thing. then shrink back when it's cool. Yeah. Well, just true. Think about your, your rings and your hands, which is why I don't wear a lot of my rings in the summer because my hands expand because it's hot and it's humid. Mm-hmm. But in the winter. Yeah. Which is funny because I um, – my – my hand has just expanded, and I've n- I haven't been able to get my ring off in over two years. Are you really not? I remember this was a part of our blender. No, I still short. can't. I still can't get. You it still can't off. get it off. No, dang. Dude. Like this is me trying to get it off. You haven't lost circulation, which is impressive. No, it's my finger is like a sycamore tree just growing around this ring. <laughs> it's like till death do us part, and <laughs> until your bloating goes down. I can't get it off. I and so it's on me. Well, till death do you part. Sorry, Kyle, you stuck with me. <laughs> as I can't get the ring off, and for other reasons. Yeah, but but that's up there. So that's one of them. <laughs> one of them. Sarah, are you ready to react? I am so ready. Okay, so the Eiffel Tower can grow in the summer. If you could be fifteen centimeters taller or shorter. Which would you pick? Shorter. Really? Yes. 100%. Because I feel like I'm not very tall. I'm 5'8", which is a slightly above average, I believe. But growing up, it gave me enough stress for jeans. Jeans never were long enough for me. Mm-hmm. And the fashion at that time is what the fashion is now. So it's the wide leg. It was the boot cut. So you could not get away with a shorter jean. Like if it wasn't hitting the right. floor, it would look awkward and not cool. So very mm-hmm. stressful time. And now it's very stressful again because I'm like, it's not going to fit me lengthwise unless you spend like a lot of money on jeans. Anyways, I digress. I would be shorter. I think fashion fits better. On shorter? Mm-hmm. You do. I, it's interesting because I would pick taller really? for the opposite, for the same reason, but like opposite. Yeah. Because I have teeny tiny little legs, you know, uh-huh. my legs, half of my body is torso. And then the other half is my leg. And so it's hard to wear pants for the same reason because – but my pants are always dragging. Mm, But if I was just 15 – but, you know, I'd have to be specific. I'd say if I was 15 centimeters longer in the leg, Mm. Mm. not just long – but if I was 15 centimeters longer in the torso, I would have I think it's just an overall shrinking. Like you take your seeing proportions 
and you stretch you shrink it or you shrink in the same proportion so you don't stretch out and you don't crumple mm. up you just your proportions stay the same right yeah but then I would still have the same problem with jeans. No, I don't think so. They wouldn't be still long. You would be taller. Yeah, but my but I'd have to get a bigger size because yeah. my waist would be bigger. Yes. So then I'd get the bigger waist, and then because oh. I'd get the bigger waist, my pants would still be. Huh. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's fair. So I don't know. I think that this is a lose-lose. You know honestly. what it's telling us is that we're perfect just the way we are, and jeans oh. are the problem. Not, not our jeans, but blue jeans. blue jeans. If you thought there could only be one game about celebrities named Jack in a 15-minute weekly podcast, you'd be wrong. F*** you, Jack. But you are right about one thing. Only one Jack can reign supreme in this next game, the Jack-Off. All right, Maggie. In your first corner, you have Jack Lemon. A prolific actor and comedian, Jack Lemmon's career spanned over five decades, earning him two Academy Awards and numerous other accolades, with memorable roles in films like Some Like It Hot and The Apartment. Lemmon's ability to excel in both comedic and dramatic roles made him a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. In the other corner, Jack Benny. A pioneer in the world of comedy, Jack Benny's career spanned radio, television, and film, making him one of the most recognizable entertainers of his time. Known for his impeccable comedic timing and self-deprecating humor, self-deprecating humor, Benny's influence can still be felt in the work of modern comedians. The question, if you were attending your boss's daughter's wedding, which Jack would you take as your plus one? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, because you want your plus one to be funny, mm -hmm. but you don't want them to not know when something is serious because it's a wedding, mm -hmm. but you want them to be entertaining, but you don't want them to steal the show. Exactly. <sighs> so those are all things that I'm weighing right now. Um, and I, I think I'm, with Jack Lemon, interesting choice. And why mm -hmm. do you think so? I think that he does balance. He plays the role well. I think he would play the role well of wedding date. I think he would be charming mm -hmm. at the table mm -hmm. with the guests. I think he would he would dance, and people would think, "Oh, that's good." But he would also, you know, pay respect. He would say something nice to the father of the father of the bride. He would he would be uh, a charmer. Yes, hundred percent. A charmer, not a clown. Yes. I would agree with that. I think I would make the same choice. Even though, like, he could be a little, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of anything wrong with him. Because I think he's a great actor, a great performer. He was. And he was a delightful human. So if he was. That I know of. Yeah. That I know. That, you that know. I know. That I, the screen presented it to me. Jack right. Benny seemed you like. You're, but if it was, like, an edgier wedding, you know. I guess that's I guess that's the thing. It'd have to be like um I'd have to know know like okay, what's the vibe? Yeah. Is this like a wedding in a wedding at a at a is it like a, a destination wedding mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where it's a smaller group but more intimate so like people are kind of letting loose a little more. Right. right. Or is this a formal wedding mm -hmm. in town? Yeah. Grandma's there. You know, let's – I think you you got one wedding for each. I think Jack Benny would be the better choice for, like, a destination wedding because he would be the life of the party and everyone's there to party. Right. I think Jack Lemon would be great for, like, your your typical larger event. He, the crowd would love him. Everyone would come up and be like, oh, he's just so great. Thank you for bringing him, you know? Yes. They'd be like, when's the wedding? And we'd be like, uh, he's – he's – and I'd be like, I'm already married. Yeah, this is just my dead. wedding date. And also he's dead. So. So, so never. I'm not marrying a dead man. I'm sorry. Grandma. Grandma. I'm not going to marry someone who's been dead for years. May he rest in peace. But we would still take him to the wedding. Well, Sarah, mm -hmm. 
Are you ready for your fact? I'm buckled up. I'm ready for it. In 1932, singer Helen Kane sued the production company responsible for Betty Boop, saying that the character ripped off her unique singing style. Unfortunately for Helen Kane, the lawsuit revealed that she herself was the crook and had ripped off the style from the black child singer, Baby Esther. Wow. Way to get, like, justice in the 30s. What a twist. That is a twist. Right? That's very brazen of her. I thought the same thing. To know you're already in the wrong and then try and profit off of that even more. Yeah. To be like, I'm going to rip off this child Mm -hmm. performer, Mm -hmm. and then I'm going to be mad when a cartoon rips from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's karma coming back at you. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get away with it. And she didn't. And she didn't. Which is amazing. It is amazing. I, I... I think that it takes a special person to do that, though. You know, mm-hmm. like something's got to be a little unscrewed. Well, I don't even think it's that. I think you should have you have like a lot of self value, like a lot of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not pomp, but you just your ego is inflated, right? Yeah, because it's not like self worth. Like self worth is good. Yes, like believe in yourself. Yes, find value in yourself. Yes. At some point, you have to be like. Uh, am I a little a little much? But it's also if you see value in somebody else, you celebrate it. Like, wow, that's amazing. Right. You don't need to rip it. No. Completely. No, and not give credit at least. Because yeah. imitation is the best form of flattery. I will say, I didn't know who Helen Kane was, but when I Googled imaged her, I was like, oh, that's Betty Boop. <laughs> Like, it's a pretty one-to-one yeah. copy. But they're like, uh, not Like, likeness is pretty much the same. Hmm. Voice, like, all of I mean, it is, like, a. it's a pretty solid rip. Are you Googling image? No, I didn't. Right I didn't. No. I trust you because I know what Betty Boop looks like. So I, in my mind, see the uh, lifelike version of her. The human the version. The human, yeah. yes. Which I love. Do you ever see those videos on, like, TikTok or Reels where it's, they take a cartoon character and then they make them look realistic. No. Is that in your algorithm? No, it's not. My oh. algorithm robot has not decided that is what I should be looking at. Right now, it's a lot of haircuts um, and uh, house flips. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's what my robot thinks is what I want. And I'm not going to argue. DIY that, house flips? Yeah, like transformation. But i got to be honest. going to look. Since the algorithm is listening to us, I'm getting kind of frustrated with it because I don't want to see him anymore, especially because it's like it's a two-parter. I'm like, I don't want a two-parter. Show me the beginning and the end. That's all I care about. I hate the two-parter. Don't want a two-parter. I hate, I hate it. And I'm like, I just want to see – like, this is already sped up to an unrealistic time. Like, just cut out all the middle. Yeah. I don't care about this. I understand you have to sand yeah, and cut wood. Fantastic. Just show me the room. Show me it. Oh, and Show these, and these silly little crafts. They're like, oh, this is a great gift for Father's Day. And it starts off with these simple cardboard pieces. But then you take the cardboard, you glue them together, and then you have to cut out this other little piece of paper and perfectly put it on. And then you have these other little cardboards that you put paper. I'm like, this is for a box? I'm like, no, I'll just go to buy that from Target. This is silly. Why would anyone have the time to spend an hour and a half gluing paper, making sure everything's the right size? Like, sure, it's easy for you because everything's pre-cut. And because you're doing this for content. Yeah. You know? You're doing this for satisfying content. I'm doing this as a gift. Yeah. If you can suggest it as a gift, you better. It needs to be easy, easy for me to execute. 100%. Algorithm, get it together. Get it together. Speaking of the algorithm, stealing people's ideas. Uh, are you ready to react? <laughs> I'm buckled up and ready. So Helen Kane is a big old talent thief. What is a piece of someone else's personality that you've stolen and claimed as your own? Oh, that's a deep question. Real life? I feel like a lot when 30 Rock was going on, Sue Lemon would say nerds a lot. Hey, nerds. And I feel like Liz Lemon. Liz Lemon. What did I say? Sue? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Who's Sue Lemon? I don't know. Is that I don't a- know what I said. 
Is that a person? No, I don't think did, so. Is, did you steal something from Sue no, Lemon? No, the name Sue is from a podcast that I'm listening to right now. Sue Knight. What's the podcast? Oh, Sue Knight. Yeah, it's really Ooh, good. Yeah, the you mis- told me about the mystery this podcast. Is Sue Knight. Very good. But yeah, I feel like nomenclature like that or from community when um, – uh, pop, pop. <laughs> that phrase, if anyone was really big, community fan, nope. Like that type of stuff. I don't know if I stole anybody's personality traits, like a person, like a friend. It is easy to steal like – it's easy to steal phrases. Mm-hmm. Because you don't even realize you're doing it. You're having a conversation with someone. It's seeping into your brain. Mm-hmm. Or like you're watching it all the time. And then you just can't stop about you? yourself from saying it. Oh, I was going to say also. Like I transition everything with also. Also, also. And I feel like that was someone in high school would always do that. And then I started doing it. It's a really you great know? question. I'm going to start self-examining my nomenclature and see if there's anything that feels – out of place like this doesn't belong to me i'm gonna go put it back but then again flattery imitation is the best highest form of flattery i know and to be honest yeah. like i want some good stuff of other people to rev up on me right you know yeah yeah and it seems like i can only think of phrases mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm sure there are elements probably how you- of my entire personality that i have stolen from you i don't think so i don't you're very you're original and unique no way no way. Likewise. Thank you. I've probably stolen from you and not even, you know, you know we've what? probably just like I, back and forth borrowed. I wouldn't even consider it stealing. I would say take it. If you like something that I'm putting down, pick it up. Yeah. Use it's it. It's like the sisterhood of the traveling personality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I take this all back. Take it back. I still think Helen Kane is kind of garbage, but I do think that it's okay. If if parts of your personality and nomenclature is borrowed from someone else. hundred percent. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love a review, subscribe, or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it. Or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow.